Good morning friends, uh, today we will discuss about the nerve con conduction study of the uh, acute inflammatory demyelinating polyneuropathy uh, also called the uh, Gulenberry syndrome. Okay. So, the case history of this patient was uh, this patient was uh, presented to our OPD with the complaint of bilateral upper limb as well as the lower limb weakness uh, for 4 days of duration it was progressive in nature. And, but there is no any uh, sensory symptoms uh, and there is no any bladder and bowel involvement, cranial nerves are intact and the consciousness of patient was also normal. So, when someone develops the acute onset uh, weakness, uh, we always think of the AIDP as one of the possibility and when he tried to elicit the reflex, deep tendon reflex, uh, all the reflex were absent in this patient. So, we requested him to undergo the nerve conduction study in our lab. We showed uh, we have done the nerve conduction studies of the so many nerves, but uh, let us look at here in the um, motor conduction study of the ulnar nerve here. So, what you can see here is that uh, this is the stimulus and this is the onset of the motor unit action potential you can see here. And this is the uh, below elbow stimulus for the ulnar nerve and this is the upper elbow stimulus for the ulnar nerve. So, what we are uh, supposed to see in a patient with GVS is that we are uh, supposed to see the whether there is the prolongation of the distal latency or not one. Uh, second is whether uh, there is a feature of the conduction block or not uh, and third one is whether there is the uh, uh, temporal dispersion or not and so what about the sensory uh, part and the whether there is a presence or absence of the F wave or not. So, let us analyze. So, distal at latency uh, is this from stimulus to the onset of the uh, motor unit action potential is a distal latency you can see here is a 2.5 usually take the if the distal latency is less than 3.3 milliseconds then it is usually normal. So, in this patient distal latency seems normal. And but uh, if you compare the uh, uh, motor unit action potential amplitude uh, from the wrist uh, below elbow and upper elbow in the below elbow uh, you can see here the amplitude is 8.23 here this is the 8.23 this amplitude is 8.23 uh, but in the upper elbow this amplitude is only 4.06 you can see here this is only 4.06 if you take out the ratio of the uh, proximal and the distal uh, stimulus amplitude you can see that there is a significantly drop in the amplitude normally there should not be any drop there is significantly drop. So, if the drop is more than 50 percent then this is the confirmed conduction block and if it is more than 30 percent then it is the possible conduction block. So, here if you take out the ratio by 8 by 4 uh, then uh, is, there is a uh, drop by uh, near about 50 percent uh, of drop ok. So, there is a conduction block. So, this is the conduction block you can see even in the graph that there is a uh, drop in this amplitude ok. This is the another uh, specific NCB finding of the patient, uh, of the G patient with GBS ok. Second thing you have to look for is the temporal dispersion ok. So, for the temporal dispersion you have to calculate this area this is also called the compound motor action potential area this is the area ok. Here you can see the area is here. So, in the below uh, elbow stimulation the area is 30.53 in the upper elbow is the 14.79. So, if you take out the ratio if there is the prolongation of the area by at least uh, 1.15 then that is a significant. So, you can see there is the uh, temporal dispersion here as well there is a temporal dispersion here as well. So, uh, so, till now we have seen there is no increase in distal latency, but there is the feature of conduction block as well as there is a temporal dispersion is there. Uh, let us see the uh, sensory uh, uh, study of the ulnar nerve. You can see there is a very very nice uh, sensory nerve action potential and it is the normal for the uh, ulnar nerve and usually in a patient with GBS sensory findings is usually normal. And let us look for the F wave. We know the F wave check for the uh, proc uh, proximal segment usually the roots 
and on giving the repeated uh, supra threshold stimulus maximal stimulus we have to see the f waves and most of the uh, in the most of the stimulus we can see any f wave here in this slide you can see the f wave here uh, but the f wave is 64.4 usually in the upper limb we take up to 30 if it is less than 30 it's normal but if it is more than 30 it's abnormal here is in 64.4 so definitely there is the prolongation of f wave latency and in most of the uh, stimulus there is no f wave mean that f wave is absent so absent of f wave and the prolongation of the f wave is one of the specific finding for the gbs uh, which you can get even in the earlier phase uh, in a uh, of gbs so these are the ncv findings and these finding uh, like uh, conduction block or increase in uh, temporal dispersion uh, distal latency increase F wave absent, we should get at least in two nerve uh, to diagnose the GBS by the nerve conduction velocity study. I think this uh, uh, information will be fruitful uh, for you. And if you like it, please uh, do uh, keep sharing and liking this video. Thank you so much.